I'm so delighted to have with us today Victoria Reynoldson, who is the founder and CEO of Culture Cuppa. Victoria is a communication coach and certified cultural intelligence trainer, a keynote speaker, host of the Cultural Communication Confidence podcast, and also a huge advocate and long-term member of Global Chamber. Victoria, it's such a delight to have you keynote speaking at our monthly meetup. I'd love to now hand over to you to educate us. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie. And I'm really excited to be back talking in front of you all. And today's topic we're talking about is build your global influence through speaking like a leader. And I want to start with a question. Why are you here? Why are you here? What is it that you want to achieve in your global business today? And I know this is quite a confrontational question, but I really want you to think about this. What is it you're trying to get out of being part of this community? What is your ultimate goal? Are you trying to expand into new markets, build up your business in markets you're already established in? Are you looking for corporate clients? Are you looking for individual clients? I really want you to ask yourself this question because although this community is amazing and I love these meetings, I want you to also get super clear what it is that you want. Now, if you're feeling like you want to share this, put it into the chat. It's not going to be recorded this part, but I'm really curious what is on your mind when I ask this question, what your goal is right now. And I'm going to head over to the chat and just see what people are writing. I'll just give you a minute for that. I think this is a really, really important question. And I can see some people writing things like growth, which is brilliant. But again, get these really specific. What does growth look like to you? Is that about numbers of clients? Is it about certain markets? Um, I just really kind of think this is a question we need to ask ourselves so that we have this at the forefront of our mind. And while you're continuing to type your thoughts there, I want to ask you, how are you achieving that goal? Now, these meetings are in, as important as any to achieve that. And I can see that people are talking about finding more clients, to speak like Victoria, brilliant, love that, uh, more clients. Um, absolutely, to build a connected community. I love these ideas. But the real question is, is how are you achieving this through your speaking? And I'm going to get you to do a poll with me because I'm really curious about um, what it is you're doing right now to achieve that business goal in your global business. There are options here about you can, should be able to choose multiple options here. But I'm curious, are you doing pitches and customer client presentations? Are you giving virtual talks? Are you speaking live at in-person events? Are you creating videos to share on social media? Or are you going live? Vote now and let me know what it is you're doing right now with your speaking to achieve your global business goal. So I'll give you again a minute, but what I can, I will start to comment on what I'm starting to see in the results is that I can see that lots of people are doing pitches and customer presentations. Some people are speaking live, but not so many people are giving virtual talks, creating videos or going live. And I'm going to keep the poll open because I think this is a really interesting question. How are you going to achieve your business goals through your speaking? This is so important because this is all about enhancing your visibility. For you to get, if I go back to the goals in the chat, for you to kind of get growth, more clients, to build your connections and your community, the, the way to do this is to be more visible out in the world. And that is exactly through these opportunities. And it's absolutely brilliant that many of you are doing some of these today. But the question I want to ask you today is how can you go further? How can you enhance your personal and professional brand? How can you enhance your reputation out there? And how can people get to know you so they really like you and feel you and feel your energy and feel like, yes, you are the right person to work with? 
So I'm going to end the poll now. Thank you for voting. I can see that there are some opportunities for us to uh, keep speaking, and I'm going to close that now. The reason I'm talking about this is that I see this as a massive opportunity for you. If you are creating these speaking opportunities, you are going to be seen by your ideal clients and be able to grow in the ways that you want to. In my view, there are four key ways that you can do this. And I talk about the four pillars of global leader communication. To start off with, it starts with confidence. Confidence is so critical, whether you are an experienced speaker and do many of these activities today, or whether you're on the starting of your speaking journey. We all have things in our mind about how we are when we speak. Sometimes we don't like the way we sound. Sometimes we doubt ourselves when it comes to certain audiences or certain contexts. So confidence isn't just a light switch you turn on. It's an ongoing journey to keep building up your confidence to show up and to speak up. The next pillar is about clarity. For you to be able to do many of these activities, you need to know how to speak confidently and concisely to share your ideas for them to be landing with the people you want to be heard, that you want them to hear. This is so, so important that you have that clarity in the way that you share your views and that people understand what it is that you want to say. And those ideas land with impact. The third area, the third pillar is about connection. Connection for me is about how you say things, thinking about your body language, what you're doing with your eyes, your smile, your hands to really engage people. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about speaking in person or whether we're speaking virtually. There is there are great opportunities virtually to engage with people. You need to know the best ways to kind of connect in this space. So in this pillar, it's knowing how to use your nonverbal communication skills to really connect and engage. And finally, the fourth pillar. The fourth pillar is about challenging conversations. Challenging conversations come up no matter where we're at, no matter how successful we are. They can be about tough conversations with customers. Um, I was talking to Michael earlier about boundaries. Having Setting boundaries can be a challenging conversation. You need to be able to know how to have these challenging conversations in a way that still maintains connection, but advocates for you and ensures that you're still able to glow, grow your global business in the way that you want to. So there we are, four key pillars, confidence, clarity, connection, and challenging conversations. I want you to think about these pillars and think about the activities I've shared with you today and how you're going to use these and activate these to enable your growth goals, your global business goals. I think this is a great opportunity for you to really up your visibility, to really enhance your professional and personal reputation and get your personal brand out there. Now, I want to extend an offer today. If this is something you want to learn more about, and you yourself know that you have an area that you need more support in, I'm going to offer three clarity calls this month in May. And if you'd like to take me up on that, all you need to do is either direct message me here or reach out to me on LinkedIn and we can book that in. And in that clarity session, I can give you further support around those areas that you find challenging and give you some insights about how to start moving forward. So I'd love to extend that to the community today. And th that's it from me today. This was just a very brief introduction, but I hope it's got you thinking and always come back to what it is you're trying to achieve and how can speaking enable your global dream. Thank you very much, Victoria. Very insightful. And having worked with you professionally, I can say some of the skills that you do bring to the surface are highly critical in, in terms of doing global business. So thank you for giving us some insight. And um, that offer is amazing as well. I really appreciate that. Um, I am going to now hand over to some questions. So Michael Quigley, welcome. Thank you so much for coming along to speak at our Global Chamber London Meetup. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to the audience, Michael Quigley, owner of Cataholis. Now, I was first introduced to Michael when he released his first book, 
So not, uh, not only is Michael a book author with two wonderful books, if you haven't read them, uh, Michael can put some more details in the chat later on in the meeting. Um, but not only is Michael a book author, he's a trainer, he's a speaker, he's an educator, and he is really a thought leader at what he does. He has the ability to work with leaders, helping them to understand what does growth mean to them? And I know that as a fact because I've worked with Michael for a number of years as a member of Global Chamber. Um, today, Michael is going to talk a little bit about how he grew his business, what are some of the programs that he's got on, on order today, and how he can help us. Because, Michael, I'm going to hand over to you to share your mission, which is really important. And hopefully all of us here collectively today can help you on that mission. Over to you. Thank you very much. Can I just start by giving Victoria, can we give Victoria a big round of applause? Because I was... That was brilliant. I was there like making, I got my notes. I'm, I'm happy, money, you know. Uh, she has a podcast called Cultural Communication Confidence. It's fantastic. Really, really good. What I personally like about it, sometimes she has guests. Sometimes she just speaks herself. So you get a nice little mix. So hello, um, I'm Mark Quigley, and I'm going to be a little bit different to Victoria. I've got some notes here, but I'm also going to speak from the heart. And you know me, I never run over. So I'm on a mission to help a billion people, right? And it's working. <laughs> I'm coming into my fourth year in the Global Chamber. I want to say thank you so much from the heart to all of you supporting me um, and help me. So what do I actually do? I help people to grow, which means expanding their horizons the way they think and then deepening the skill sets. You can do it people one-to-one, -one, you can do it in groups. What I'm going to talk around today are my products and services, which I don't really talk around a lot, but I've got some. Um, one of the key skills, if you make a note, you can write it down if you want. One of the key skills that you and your people are going to need for the rest of your life is to be consistently highly motivated. It doesn't matter what profession you're in, doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter if you've got children or not, doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, doesn't matter if you've got a disability, doesn't matter if somebody dies. That's life. And how do we consistently stay motivated and dedicated to the cause? You know, Because if I just give up after 10 years, meh. So I've built something. So I've created my own model. It's called the five types of motivation. And when I first joined the Global Chamber, I taught it to some of the members. You might have seen it. Um, and I've been teaching online. I've been teaching in person. Luke, who's here today, my friend, I taught it to him a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if you're, you know, entrepreneurial wanting to grow your business, just a couple of tips for you. First thing is like, how do you give value when you're not in the room? Because it's all good if I've got a model. But if I'm, you know, if, if Ruby's in Ghana, right, how do I get it out to Ruby without meeting her? Which I hopefully meet you one day. So what I've done is I've, I've turned it into an audio-based learning program, okay? So it's kind of like a podcast, but in a lot more depth. So just before I show it to you, I want to share my screen because I'm excited to show it to you. Just have a think about this. You can put it in the chat box if you want. What is one of the most important things to you in your life? And just write it down or think about it. I always start the program by asking people to reflect on the top three. So you don't have to do three today, just do one. But then think about, you know, what do you reckon is one that somebody else would say? And if you want to put in the chat box, here's an audience interaction, try this. What do you think one thing everybody says is most important to them, no matter where they are in the world, where I've done this? If I say to you, you know, what are the most important things? Everyone says different things. But what do you reckon is the one that everybody says, no matter who they are and where they are? And it's, it's every single time I've taught people on this, this has always come up. What is the one thing that everybody says? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it happiness? Is it success? Like, what is it? Yeah. Family. Yeah, you've got it straight away. So if you want to be critical for a second, how is your business helping somebody to help their family? Because that's all they really care about. <laughs> Spoiler alert, right? So just something to consider. Yeah, if you're trying to help yourself to be motivated and other people, people are going to be motivated for their family. Yeah, you're going to be motivated. I'm getting shivers thinking about it. Because we are, we, we motivate for the people that we care about and the people that we love, right? So it's just something to consider. So I want to share my screen and show it to you because I'm very proud of it. So if we go to share my screen. Katie, can you just give us a quick thumbs up if you can see this? Can you see that? Yeah. I'm just moving a lot of things out of the way because Katie's made my co-host. So it's called the five types of motivation because a lot of people have very shallow understanding of motivation. They think it's it comes and it goes or it's about YouTube videos or, you know, whatever. I don't believe that's good enough. If you're in business, you've got to be consistently, deeply motivated. So the whole point is that you can motivate yourself. Yeah, you don't need me. I can show you how to do it, but then you do it yourself. So I'll put this in the chat if you want to have a look at it. Very, very proud of it. You know, if I'm trying to help a billion people, this is the first product I believe that's going to start me on that journey to really get me there. Because no matter where you are in the world, you can just buy it. You download it. You don't have to have access to the internet. Buy it once, train yourself, listen to it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. It just becomes part of your thought process. Final thing I'll say on this before I hand over to Katie, because she's going to say a lot of something, 
is that I use this model myself. I only use stuff that works, you know, in my own business, by other people or by myself. You, if you know me, you might know my father's had some, you know, very poor health of the last few years. I've used this model to get me through these times, to be there for him. Back to that thing about family, right? It's no good me running my business if I'm not there for my dad. So I use my own model and it's helped me to get through that. So that's it. I'll put it in the chat box if you're interested in the boy, main way you can help if you be so kind is just share it with people. You know, just share it with family, with friends, business owners, clients. Just get it out there. Yeah, it's really simple. I like to give value if I'm not in the room. Click download, bought, got it sorted. You know, you don't need a training session. You don't need me. You can do it for yourself. All right. So I've got one minute. So I'm going to hand back to Katie, who's just going to say a little bit because she's taking herself through the program. And then if we have time for questions, great. If we don't, just reach out to me another time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Michael. And one of the reasons why I wanted uh, Michael to come and share this program with you is because I don't know about everybody else on the call, but there's something about the universe. And Julie and I have had these conversations in recent, recent weeks. There's a lot of challenges coming our way. We're running and operating businesses. We're probably working on multiple projects at a time. We've got our family to think about. We've got our friends. Where are we finding the time? How are we continuing to keep ourselves motivated and on track? And actually, when Michael introduced the audio book, because I've, I've gone through the model with Michael a couple of years ago, I've been introduced to it. We've had, we've had Michael on the program before talking about the five types of motivation. And that gave me a really good education into what motivation actually is, because I think a lot of us don't really know. And so the basics were there. But when I went through the audio book, there was something really valuable, but valuable about sitting there and going through that program again and tying it back into the elements of my life where maybe I'm struggling a little bit to give it my all. Maybe I'm struggling a little bit to find the passion, find the love. And going back to your book, Loving Leadership, and finding the passion in everything we do, well, that's one thing. But then how do we actually stay motivated? And what is our motivator? So if you're not quite sure on what your motivators are, what drives you and keeps you going, then I would really encourage you to visit the five types of motivation model because it really helps you to put things in perspective. And actually listening to it through the audio book, it had changed for me over the years. So the first time we did it, there were other things that, you know, that motivated me and I sat within a particular camp and now things are different because things are more fast paced. So thank you, Michael, for having that program available because it's really helped me. Um, and I suppose we do have we have time for a question now and maybe it's a question on what are the five different motivators? That would be my first question from a headline perspective. Do you want me to answer it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a five steps, right? Starts yeah. with fleeting motivation. It comes and it goes. Then you yeah. get to pulse motivation. You start to use your imagination. Then you get to future motivation. You start to make a plan. Then you get to fear or fun. You decide, are you a positive or negative person? Which vibe do you want? And then you have the framework where you take the tools and you build it into life you want. There you go. <laughs> and I love the framework and how Michael delivers that as well. I just thought it'd be nice to throw in there the different types as well. And what we'll do now, Michael, thank you very much for, for presenting that, is we will... Stop for Q&A.